Yes, meanwhile, we heard from Saquon earlier in the show, but there's an argument that Barkley is the second. I want to compete. Like, I love the culture. I got to see it. Like, one of my favorite football experiences outside of, like, they haven't had that experience since college, like, because we went to Penn State, and Penn State was jumping. Yeah. So I was yeah. like, I'm just happy to be. It was, it was something I needed, like, for mm -hmm. your confidence, for your swagger. Like, you hit the open market, and, you, and you know, I'm not just a, a bruiser back. Like, they envisioned me, right. how they use Alvin, how, and, like, this is the era I'm playing in, and I'm playing the same time as him. So it's like, I don't want him to be no. There's a lot of factors, Baldy, that should give Eagles fans that's going to be the case in Philly with this roster right now. So how good can Barkley be? 2,000 yards. But, you know, if you use him the right way, I mean, he's never played. Here he is in his last game as a Giant against the Eagles, Week 18. Now, this happens to be a very good. There's Nolan Smith right there, just low hurdle right there in stride. He's got the vision against the Eagles in that Week 18 matchup. And then you want to run him on this and then run him on a report you. He'll get behind your defense. He's got great, soft, velvety hands. And the Kellen Moore is the new offense coordinator. You've got to find those kind of matchups where you feel like Saquon could put up 2,000 yards next year in Philadelphia. Uh, it's why I mean, just think about some of those other guys, Smith. So you got to imagine oh, no doubt. huge numbers potentially for him. He's not the only running back, though. Close, Jaylen, close. J Jalen, Jalen's got you. No, there. What? No. With a lot of people. The squatting mindset. Words that I've never seen of NFL total access. Mike, I'm with you. My guy Brian Baldinger in just a moment. A closer look at market for that. NFL Network Insider Mike Garofolo is with us for the latest headlines. And Mike. Uh, basically exchanging pass rushers. Bryce Huff went down there to Philadelphia via free agency. Now we put ourselves a guy in Reddick that we know we can rely upon for some pass rush and sack. The Jets could potentially get their own compensatory pick back. So a lot of moving parts here. But because in some ways, no team wants to lose a guy as talented as Hassan Reddick. But the reality is the business side of it. Ryan Baldinger will be joining us uh, here in just now. Oh, there's Baldy. Here there we is. go. All right. Explain Hassan Reddick do for this team's defense. Well, the, the difference, honestly, between Bryce Huff and really even come close to 50% of the snaps. Hassan moves to beat you. He'll play opposite and start all in one. They want eight deep on the defensive line. Oh, by the way, six of their eight on their, really, they don't have holes on their defense right now. It's sort of next for looks even better. Meanwhile, uh -huh. the 49ers actually have a little bit of a developing situation this week on the Nightcap podcast that he's trying to get what he deserves. Yeah. Just the value I hold when I walk in that building because um and if 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 they don't see it worth in that, that's all that that's using emojis. Can you explain the latest on the Brandon Ayuk situation? <laughs> we don't have to use emojis here, but not close. And they have made a recent run at it, from my understanding, Mike Gam. It's not like they haven't had any not quite there at this point. So I think we've got some time before this one gets settled. Either way, they agree on something. Yeah, you know, to your point, we've seen some of these big name guys that wear San Francisco 49er uniform you know, being paid in the state of Florida. Who are they? That's right, and no state tax down there. Let's start with his career. This one worth up to 9.075. That will round up 9.1. That to continue. Meanwhile, Foye Oluokan, who signed a free agent deal uh, with the, the year that he already had left there, uh, the tackling machine there for the Jacksonville Jaguars, and I with the Jaguars uh, after signing with them as a free agent a couple of years ago, Mike. Yeah, by the way, you mentioned the no. Jason Kelsey and Fletcher Cox to throw first pitch at Philly's game. Philadelphia Eagles stars Jason Kelsey and Fletcher Cox are set to add a new accolade to their resumes, as they take on the honor of throwing the first pitch at the Phillies game this Saturday. Despite their involvement in numerous sporting events across Philadelphia, this will mark Kelsey's first time participating in such a ceremony, making it a notable occasion. However, there's a twist to the story as Kelsey revealed that, due to his elbow condition, Cox will be taking on the bulk of the throwing duties. This unexpected development adds an intriguing element to the event. Additionally, for those unable to attend the Phillies game, there's another event on the horizon. The NFL has announced that the Eagles' home opener, set to take place in Brazil, will only be available for streaming on the Peacock subscription service. While this move aims to boost subscription numbers, it raises accessibility concerns for fans outside the market. Meanwhile, rumors swirl regarding Kelsey's potential return to football, with speculation fueled by comments from Saquon Barkley, who reminisced about Kelsey's dominance on the field. Despite the enticing prospect of Kelsey's return, uncertainties persist, particularly given the toll football takes on players' bodies. 
In other news, the Eagles face a significant change in their front office as Jake Rosenberg, the team's salary cap executive, departs after 12 years of service. Rosenberg's departure prompts reflection on his contributions to the team's financial strategies and raises questions about the future direction of the Eagles' salary management. Amidst these developments, Eagles head coach Nick Sirianni remains optimistic about the team's prospects, hinting at potential roster additions in free agency or the draft. With decisions looming on key positions like center and right guard, the Eagles continue to navigate the offseason with an eye towards strengthening their roster for the upcoming season. As we delve into the intricacies of this unfolding narrative, it becomes abundantly clear that each twist and turn adds a layer of depth to the overarching storyline. From the anticipation surrounding Jason Kelsey and Fletcher Cox's inaugural first pitch at the Phillies game, resonating with a sense of novelty despite their season presence in the Philadelphia sports scene, to the nuanced implications of Kelsey's elbow condition necessitating an unexpected delegation of duties, we find ourselves immersed in a tapestry of unexpected occurrences. Simultaneously, the NFL's strategic decision to exclusively stream the Eagles' home opener in Brazil on the Peacock subscription service sparks a discourse on accessibility and the evolving landscape of sports broadcasting. This move, while undoubtedly aimed at leveraging digital platforms for broader reach, underscores the shifting paradigms of fan engagement in an era defined by technological advancement. Moreover, the tantalizing prospect of Kelsey's potential return to the gridiron, buoyed by Saquon Barkley's reflections on his on-field prowess, injects an element of speculation into the discourse. Yet, amidst the allure of such a narrative, Sobering reflections on the toll of professional football on players' bodies invite introspection, highlighting the complex interplay between ambition and physical limitations. Meanwhile, the departure of Jake Rosenberg from the Eagles' front office signals a pivotal moment of transition, prompting introspection on his legacy and the enduring impact of his financial stewardship. As the team navigates this juncture, guided by head coach Nick Sirianni's unwavering optimism and strategic foresight, we are reminded of the perennial ebb and flow inherent in the realm of professional sports. In this rich tapestry of events, each thread woven into the fabric of the narrative contributes to a mosaic of intrigue, inviting us to ponder the multifaceted nature of athletic pursuits and the indelible imprint they leave on the collective consciousness. Fala galera, beleza pessoal? Antes de chegar nesse vídeo, quero te pedir o seu like, inscrever-se no canal, aquele like maroto e bora aqui pro vídeo. Adversário na final do Carioca, Flamengo e Nova Iguaçu guardam curiosas ligações envolvendo Zico. STC, dois finalistas, tem origem em comum com participação do Galinho de Quintino. Entenda isso aí, pessoal. O que um clube centenário, rico e tradicional na América do Sul pode ter em comum com outro é, regional de menor expressão e com apenas 34 anos de vida? Flamengo e Nova Iguaçu começam a decidir o título do Campeonato Carioca de 2024, neste sábado, às 5 horas de horário de Brasília, no Maracanã, com uma curiosidade e coincidência. O atual, os atuais é, centros de treinamento dos dois clubes só existem graças a uma... Os, os dois... Perdão, os dois clubes só existe graças a uma mãozinha do Zico. Os dois treinamentos, né? Os dois setores de treinamento só existe graças a uma mãozinha do Zico, que foi uma espécie de pedra fundamental dos dois CTs mais comum assim. Como assim? É... Então senta aí que lá vem a história. 
por onde cronologicamente é o CT Rubo Negro, por onde cronologicamente é, voltemos ao ano de 1983, Zico já era ídolo e campeão de, de tudo pelo Flamengo, estadual, nacional, continental e mundial. E quando a Europa começou a buscar jogadores no Brasil, o Rubo Negro recebeu um jun, em junho uma proposta da Udinese de 2 bilhões de cruzeiro, cerca de 69 milhões em valores atuais corrigido para levar o Galinha de Quintino para a Itália. <risos> Dirigentes tentavam valorizar com números que a época eram astronômicos, mas foi uma venda para lá de polêmica, com direito a fotos do presidente Antônio Augusto Dusch e de Abranche com a camisa 10 na, campa, na capa do Jornal do Globo. Uma chorada e outra sorrindo, como comoção e pressão enorme da torcida, invasão de vestiário, decisão levada para o Conselho Deliberativo e renúncia do mandatário Rubo Negro dois meses depois. História gigante aqui para, diga-se de passagem, né?